Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Beyond the White Picket Fence Show. I am so excited to start this every week, every Thursday is at 8 p.m. Eastern. So my name is Krista Kathleen. I'm a certified life and business coach and trainer at Inner Glow Circle. And I'm doing a little bit of rebranding. Originally, I was already doing these, but it was more for training new life coaches. And so now I still want to be working with life coaches, but I also want to work with healers, introverts, empaths, entrepreneurs, or just the modern sexy woman who wants to stop being a people pleaser and wants to start using her voice more and feeling like she's not getting taken advantage of in her relationships and just to start like taking up space and living louder in this world. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for being here. So I'm really excited for the topic tonight. Um, what is it actually? I have it written down. How to be single and not feel alone. So this is something that I coached one of my clients around recently, and this is something that I struggled with a lot when um, I was going through a divorce. And so I thought it would be really good to talk about this and break down the taboo that, you know, I used to think that when women were single that they were all miserable and they were just waiting to find their soulmate and that's actually not true it's there's a lot of people who enjoy being single so um hey angela hey jennifer welcome angela do you like this is the purple lipstick so um just to let you all know um i'm working on making my image like bolder and louder so that way I feel that way in the inside as well so um, I challenged myself yesterday to go to Walgreens or no go to Target and to buy a lipstick color that I would have never bought before and so I bought this kind of like plum berry color and I'm really digging it and I really like it I think I'm gonna wear it on a date this weekend so let me know if you like it or not Okay, let's get started with, we're going to do a card reading from my favorite deck, Soulful Woman. And just to get grounded tonight to um, be able to step away from the day and really like set into our intention of what we want from this episode of tonight's show. So go ahead and get comfy. If you're closing, if you're driving, please do not close your eyes, but if you are not driving, I want you to go ahead and close your eyes, sitting on the floor or the couch or a chair, roll your shoulders a couple times, up by your ears, releasing any tension. Good, and just relax your shoulders and let's take a couple deep breaths in, in through the nose, pause, and back out through the nose or out through the mouth whichever one feels better. And inhale in through the nose. And exhale out. <sighs> exhale any st um, stress, anxiety, tension, anything that feels heavy. You can release that with each exhale. Doesn't it feel good to just pause for a moment and just take these breaths? Ugh. I mean, I need to do this more often. Okay, good. So keep breathing. And while you're breathing, I'm going to shuffle our card deck. And I want you to think of something that you really want right now. So maybe it's something that you're struggling with in your business or your life. Something that you need guidance around, you need support. Remember, it's okay to ask for whatever you need. So just form that thing, that question in your mind. You can say it out loud. Obviously, I won't hear you. I wish I could. It's always okay to ask for help. It's actually more than okay. It's necessary if you're going to be successful in life. You have to be able to let support in at some point. We have to lower our egos. Our egos say, no, I can do it all myself. But that's not the smart way to do things. I'm going to let you know right now. So tonight's card reading is going to help you find guidance and answers. 
Ooh, okay. So keep closing your eyes, and I'm going to read our cards. So we have the power of self-talk. When my self-talk is kinder, I am empowered in my capacity to pursue my dreams and believe in myself. And on this card, I'll show you after we're done, it's a woman, and there's a dove in front of her, and she has these beautiful purple flowers over her ears, and there's a, a yellow, like, mandala behind her. So now I'm going to read from the book. The Power of Self-Talk. When I consciously practice self-talk that is kind, gentle, and compassionate, I am empowered. I notice when my self-talk puts me down, tells me I'm unworthy, or dismisses my hopes and feelings, my energy immediately drops. My mood follows, and I start to feel disempowered. When I consciously give life to an inner voice that encourages me, believes in me, and allows me to make mistakes, I start to relax and feel more hopeful. I feel more energized and my confidence increases. My self-talk is a powerful tool in supporting and empowering me around my dreams, desires, and visions. All right, and when you're ready, you can go ahead and open your eyes. And this was our card tonight, the power of self-talk. So just look at this for a moment. See if anything arises with inside of you, any emotions, thoughts, feelings. And how could that be the answer to your question tonight? And I love this. I think this is perfect for what we're going to be talking about. Because a lot of times when relationships don't work out and we end up being single, there can be a lot of like self-blame and shame and negativity. So I think self-talk is huge and the way we treat ourselves is huge. Okay, um, so let me know in the comments section what came up for you with the reading and the card. I would love to hear from you. I'd love for you to participate in this discussion tonight so it's not just me talking the whole time. But, um, okay, so to get started, I would love to know if you've ever stayed in a relationship because you were afraid of being alone. So you can drop an emoji. So let me know if you've ever stayed in a relationship because you were afraid of being alone. I am guilty as charged for that one. There was so many times that I was thinking about getting out of my marriage and I was terrified because I didn't think that I was strong enough or brave enough or capable enough of handling life without a man by my side. And now I know that's so not true. But at that time, that was my belief. That was my story. And then when you hold that belief system, it's almost impossible to find any other type of truth. So right, that's the power of coaching is coaches help you to break down um, those beliefs, get past those inner barriers. Um, but so for the first talking point, Angela said the old me, yes. Yeah, the old me too. Uh, so the first talking point is it's okay to be single. There's no shame whatsoever in being single. And I just want I want you to give yourself permission to own it. If you are single or you're getting ready to be single, you can fucking own it, right? You can say, life is giving me lemons here. It is time to start making some lemonade, right? Because like if you're embarrassed about it and thinking you did something wrong, then like people are going to respond to that and they're going to act embarrassed for you. But if you're like, you know what? This is awesome. Like this is such a great time where I get to like know myself better and spend time with myself, people are gonna really respect that and they're gonna respect you and admire you. People are still probably gonna try to set you up with their friends and their coworkers and all that and if you want that, that's cool, but I just take it as a compliment now when people do that. My mom tried to set me up uh, recently with a guy. Angela, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so now, as far as, I want to say it's a little bit more difficult for me to speak because I'm not a mother yet, but if you are a mom and you're in a relationship and the relationship doesn't feel good anymore and you're afraid because you want to have, you want your child to have both parents involved, I, I do think it is a different story and then I don't think it's a different story. 
if that makes sense. I don't think we should ever stay in a relationship out of fear. Um, that's not fair to us and that's not fair to the partner. Um, but at the same time, I can imagine that having a child adds an extra layer of fear and overwhelmment. And I don't even know if that's a word and all the other feelings. Right. Um, but I just know, I know that my mom stayed in a relationship with my stepdad for a long time because she wanted us to, you know, have the whole nuclear family. And I saw her suffer and I saw her be miserable. And I know she would have been so much happier on her own or so much happier in a different relationship, but she wanted to do what was right. And honestly, as a kid, I just wanted my mom to be happy. I just, I so badly wanted to see her happy. And she a lot of times said, you know, I did this for you. I did this for you, but I didn't want her to do that for me. I wanted her to do it for herself. Um, so that's my thoughts on that, but I, I really can't speak from this place for single moms. So I can only speak from my place of being married in my twenties and it didn't work out. And now I'm single in my early thirties. So I would love if there is any single moms watching this to just share your thoughts and let me know what you think. Okay. Hi, Javi, Christine, Elle, Candice. Carmen, Ruby, welcome everybody. So excited that you're here. Um, so number two is you're never alone unless you live on Mars. Do you like that title I came up with? <laughs> I mean, that's true. I mean, yeah. So you're not on Mars, so you're not alone. You know, I we had there's so many people in your community, right? Like there for me right now, there I go to Krav Maga. I used to go to CrossFit, but those are my friends there. Um, where else do I go? I, you know, I have my family here. I have my friends. I have what else do I do? Occasionally, when I'm feeling lonely and I I just need to cuddle and I need someone to tell me I look pretty, I'll I'll go on Bumble or Tinder and I'll go on a date on the weekend. But I mean, like, truly, you're never alone at the end of the day. And I remember, too, I was really scared to travel out into the world and be a solo female traveler. And once I, like, let go of that mentality of that I was alone, like, it became so much more fun. Like, really, I, I was like, okay, worst case scenario, what if I'm in a country, I'm the only person I know in this country, what if I'm in, like, the middle of Africa, right? and something happens, like I could go to a neighbor's house, or I could go to the grocery store, or I don't, I could go to the library, or I don't, there's just, there's always like people around, and maybe it's not like the deep relationships that we're craving, but, and, and that's what I have for me, like I have my online coaching community, I you know, I have Inner Glow Circle, and I have the group programs that I've created, and, and that's really like where my deep relationships come from at the end of the day, but I just, I, I think it, it feels so awful to start and end every day thinking that we're alone, because we're really not. We have so many great, wonderful people around us, and you can always go on to like meetup.com, or Eventbrite, or Facebook events, and go find your tribe, go find your people. The other day, I was in the bathtub, and I went on my Meetup app, and I was like, I would love to find some other like spiritual digital nomads traveling around the world that live in St. Louis right now. So I found a couple of groups, and I may go hang out with them over the next couple weekends. Right, so you gotta, you gotta get your butt up off the couch, and go out there and find your people, whether it's online or in person. All right, number three is um, take advantage of your new normal and date yourself. So I remember when I was in South America uh, in the earlier part of this year, and I had broken up with my boyfriend, Ryan, and I just just cried you know, every night. I was just crying, crying. I was so sad. And I remember someone saying, like, all this time that you're spending crying, and feeling alone, like you could actually just go out there and have fun and enjoy being single and enjoy being single in these foreign countries. And I was like, that like really hit home for me. And I'm like, they're right. Like I can just sit at home and be miserable or I can actually like take advantage of this time and just enjoy myself. And think about when you're in a relationship, 
a lot of time and energy goes into maintaining and growing and feeding relationships. And when you're single, you get to take all that energy and put it back into yourself. Um, so for example, I have been doing Krav Maga, Toastmasters. I've been seeing movies that I would probably not see if I was in a relationship. I'm thinking about maybe getting into singing and hiring a voice coach. Like, it's so cool because now I get to do things that I would have probably not taken the time to do if I was in a relationship with someone. And I mean, do I want to be single forever? No. I'm totally excited to meet my future man. I don't know who that's going to be yet. But in the meantime, I'm not going to sit at the stove and wait for the water to boil because it feels like it takes fucking forever when you watch the pot waiting for it to boil, right? So it's the same thing when you're single. Just go out there and have fun and try new things that you would have never done if you were in a relationship. All right, number four is trust that the person, that the perfect person will show up at the perfect time. And trust is huge. And I'm so grateful for some of my coaches in Inner Glow Circle because they keep telling me this over and over again. There's been times when I've gone on our group coaching calls and I'm just sad and I'm crying and I'm like, I think I'm going to be single forever. And they're like, Krista, you're not going to be single forever. And they call it my inner drama queen. They're like, your inner drama queen is coming out right now. And they totally call me out. And it's okay because I know they love me. And they're like, you need to just trust. You need to trust that there's a reason you're single right now and that the universe will send you the most perfect man. And so I actually even created this trust jar per Katie DePaula's recommendation. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it has all these feathers and sequins. And what I do is on my days when I'm feeling most anxious and overwhelmed and like I just want to give all hope, I like just on a piece of paper, I write down, I trust that the perfect man is coming to me at the perfect time. I love that mantra. And then I fold it up, I kiss it, I put it in the jar, and then I thank the universe like it's already happened. I say, thank you, thank you, thank you for letting the perfect man show up at the most perfect time in my life. And that feels better. It, it just feels like I'm more in control of the situation and that I'm doing something about it. I'm doing something about it energetically. Um, but in the meantime, I'm being grateful for being single and having the opportunity to really like work on myself, heal myself, get new skills, meet new people. So being single is really cool and it's actually really fun when you start to own it and embrace it and you stop giving a shit about what other people think. And maybe there is people that think, oh, poor Krista, she's so lonely. I feel so bad for her. And they can think that if they want, but it's not the truth. There's no part of me that wants, you know, needs or wants to be pitied at this time. I want to surround myself with people who think that I am strong and capable and are going to encourage me to keep just living and enjoying life and, and not waiting around for something that I don't know when it's going to happen. Oh, Lauren, <laughs> that's right. I forgot that you um, have this name under Facebook. Hello. Okay, Angela, you said, I love that you use Africa and aren't afraid of it. Yes, I did use Africa, didn't I? Okay, you said, when I was about to get married and things didn't work out, my whole life changed. I was so sad at first, but I'm so glad I, it happened because if I had married, if I had married you, I wouldn't have expected so many things in life. Is that a typo? If I had married him, maybe? <laughs> I want to have experienced so many things in life. So good. I love that, Angela. That's beautiful. That's perfect. Also, um, if you know of anyone who could benefit from watching this training, please feel free to tag their name in it. Anyone who's single right now or is, you know, getting ready to go through a breakup and they're scared, like just tag their name in here. Maybe this can really help them. Because, yeah, it's really scary sometimes at the thought of getting ready to be single. Um, for example, I have this guy friend and I've been helping him um, find the courage to ask his wife for a divorce. And on the day that he asked his wife for a divorce, he said, oh, I need to, um, I need to go on the dating apps and I need, to, I need to start dating. And I was like, what? 
why do you need to start dating right now? Like you are literally getting ready to start a divorce, which is a very intense process for anyone who's gone through it. And, and especially when there's children involved and he's like, well, I, I don't know how to be alone. I've never been alone before. You know, I've been with my wife since high or college and I'm like, it's okay for you to be alone. You know, and, and we talked about this. You're not really alone, but it's, it's okay for you to be a single and to just take some time off from relationships. And you don't have to jump from one relationship into another because I did that. I, I got divorced and I went from into one relationship. And then when that one ended, I went into another relationship and then that one ended. And what happens is when you jump from relationship to relationship is you never get time to really know yourself and to figure out what you really want. Again, because when you are in relationships, you're giving so much energy to that new relationship that you're really not taking the time to get to know yourself. And I know that that's really scary for a lot of people is to be with yourself because when you're with yourself, like you, there's going to be things that come up and that's scary. And there's going to be, it's going to really force you to like the areas of yourself that you don't like about yourself is you're going to like, start to face that head on but that's that's really it's a good thing but that can also be very scary and intimidating and i understand that as well but yes so i hope that this is helpful for people watching sometimes we just kind of need that permission from someone else of saying like it's okay to do this it's it's okay to feel this way and then so it's okay to feel scared or afraid or overwhelmed or unsure. A lot of times too, we think we always have to have a plan and it's okay to not always have a plan. It's okay to not know when your next relationship is gonna be, or it's okay to not know where you're gonna live next, or it's okay to not know what your next job is gonna be. You know, that's, you can just, you can trust and you can lean into that unknown, which is really hard and it's a skill and you have to practice it. And so that's why I have my trust jar my trust jar helps me to lean into the fact when I don't always know what's going to be happening next or what's going to happen next month or in three months. And I still don't know where I'm going to live after I go to South Africa in the spring. And that's okay. I think it's going to be California. I don't know. It could change. I could meet someone. I could find somewhere else. And, and that's okay. And it's okay to not know those answers all the time. <laughs> Okay, cool, Kim. I'm glad you're going to watch later. Oh, hi, Joe. <laughs> hi, Sarah. Welcome. So, yeah, um, I'm going to head out because I did Krav Maga before this and I'm super hungry and I need to make dinner. But if you have any questions or thoughts after, if you're watching this on the replay, um, just type them in to the comment section. Tag my name. I'll come back. I'll address them. But let me know if this was helpful or not, and continue to tune in and watch Beyond the White Picket Fence show. Episode two will actually be not next week, because I'm going to be in Zion National Park, but it will be in two weeks. It will be right here again at 8 p.m. Eastern for episode two. I'm not sure what that topic's going to be yet, but if you have a good topic that you want me to talk about, also put that in the comment section as well, okay? I want to make sure that I'm talking about things that you all are interested in and excited about, so. Okay, thank you so much for joining in and supporting me, and I hope that you have a great night. Bye.